Okay, let's bring in uh, David Vance, and he is uh, founder, managing director, and CIO of Bonson. You got it. Bonson, uh, of the Bonson Group. And so, um, what were you saying yesterday, and uh, how does that uh, play into what you're saying today? Yesterday, I was saying the Dow is up 500 points in the last five days, and today we're going to open down 500 points. So that's what's interesting to me about this overnight action is it looks like we're basically going to open above where we were last Thursday. Mm. But yesterday, I was saying the same thing, that the betting markets were to be believed more than anything else, and that, that's the big surprise, I, I think. decided that I don't even understand why we used to believe that. The financial markets are so much bigger Although they were pointing to the same well, thing, yeah, that's right. I, I understand. But there's like in presidential races, we they, they might be people are betting like two thousand dollars, and and we take that as all well, it's possible. Why betters aren't always smart? That's why the casino. also the way we calculated it, right. right? Because actually there were these big dollars, right? That too. But, but I think the reason here in the U.S. But I'm gamblers always lose money. That's why the casinos are so nice. But yeah. Joe, I'm a political junkie. I've never seen the betters wrong here in the U.S. Never on a substantial race. That was the whole issue in 2012, that there was never a point at which well, Romney took the lead. You, you better factor but, differently now, because they, they had bookies over in Britain, too, and those guys were That's right. That's, Does anyone that's, think that the polls were just done differently there? What they, well, the betting was probably. definitely done differently. differently. Well, I mean, that, that's the big issue they're talking about this morning, is the size guys, of the bets was very different. Are are supposed to be the, uh, yeah. Foreign currency traders are supposed to be the smartest people in the world. I think that the difference is that the foreign currency action was largely hedging driven and to the degree that you see the unwinding, there's so many other technical factors at play, but you're right. I mean, the markets seem to have got this drastically wrong. Obviously, the betters did. That's what the surprise is. I'm not surprised at what the voters did. Jim, next time um, I hear like a, like a chief bureaucrat, like Christine Lagarde, uh. in the dictionary bureaucrat picture of, of her. Next time I see her say, a uh, hundred economists have all weighed in on this and they all say the same thing and it would be an absolute, I'm gonna, th that should have told me right there that if it's a hundred, you know that, that, that it's gonna be the other side of that. Actually, we did, I did laugh at it the day when, when she said that and I think yeah. I, I and said it on said, air. Yeah, said it on air that, uh, oh, consensus, really? <laughs> so that, that's yeah. maybe a better way to go. That's the only thing that works in market sometimes is to go against the crowd. Yes, indeed. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking, Andrew, this speak to something that we discussed a moment ago. Uh, there was a great American corporate executive named Henry Singleton who ran Teledyne mm -hmm. yep, Conglomerate Teledyne. in the 60s. Big conglomerate. And, uh, and Henry Singleton distinguished himself through the following. When his stock was down, he would, uh, he would buy it. Yes. Uh, with his own money, actually, sometimes. And when it was up, he would issue it. And, um, and he would make acquisitions uh, when his stock uh, was cheap. Uh, was, was, was rich. And, uh, and this speaks to the opportunities in Britain after this vote. So I think you have to look at it two ways. One is the speculative way, which is uh, all this drama and all this froth. And the second is the substantive Henry Singleton way of what is cheap and right. what are the long-term opportunities. And to me, Britain is just wide open. I mean, uh, you know, down 7% is, yeah. not, is not down 70%, but the but uh, my goodness. And say, one of the scare tactics for the Remain people was that house prices may fall. Well. That's okay if you want to buy a house, right? right. <laughs> so I'm un count me unscared. Fair enough. And you said down five, uh, up 500, down 500. You don't sound like uh, it's necessarily time to, to go to all cash. No, definitely, not, all definitely not. Definitely not. I'm completely in Jim's side here. I think that there's going to be great value opportunities. The financials are going to get a lot cheaper. Um, we got to see what happens throughout the day from that short-term standpoint because there could be selling, be getting more selling once the algos get going and all of that. But fundamentally, I don't think that this is something to be afraid of at all. And in fact, I'm very excited about it for Britain. So do you think uh, only a journalist would say uh, it's either going to be Lehman or LTCM? So which one do you think? Would only a journalist come up with that? Someone that's never really traded Christine before? Lagarde might say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that sound kind of like... Jillian's not here, so I... I well, uh, I didn't say who it was. Now you got to out the person. Not she wrote it in the paper, every... said it on the air. Did you an not, when ago. you heard it, did you not think I maybe that's I disagree, over? I disagreed with her right there. Oh, but I, I, but I just, on the specifics, but just on the severity, the severity of it. I mean, that, those were both pretty I've severe. I've heard other smart people say Lehman things brothers? like that. I don't agree, Lehman with, brothers I don't agree with it. I'm just right. suggesting that it's, you know... Lehman Brothers? I heard her yours, say sir. it from my hotel room this morning, and I thought it was a rather uh, poor choice of words. We'll say that. Okay. 
don't know if it was the choice of words. I <laughs> could have said it different ways, but just the idea. Uh, I don't know. I hope, God forbid, something happens now. That would be. Uh, uh, so, but it seems like a housing crisis was seems you know CDOs and all that stuff might be more systemic than one country in the EU deciding. I agree. There's to, a political. Right, now we're into yeah, a, a political. Okay. Except you, you, don't, you don't know the second and third order effects. Right. Now there, there are banks. Could be ripples. Europe. Could be people that are not set up or for could this. Could be waves. There, yeah. there, there are banks. I mean, someone Europe could go out of business. business. There there definitely, hedge funds. funds could go out of business on this, right? There could be some that that they were totally. Oh, if wrong. you were on the wrong. Yes, but the question is, are there operating businesses that go out of business right. as a function of this? Right. Also, I think that Julian was setting this up not as a certainty, but as is a point of comparison of the actual specifics. But there are banks in Italy, for example, that that are barely making it as is. And if there were to be uh, the bad kind of ripple, we yeah. might see a severe banking crisis in the continent of Europe. I think it's if possible. you were to take one entity that would suffer the most, it wouldn't be an operating business in UK, it would be the bureaucrats of yeah. Brussels. They're the ones I would short if I could. Right, yeah. Yeah. excellent short set. You can't get a borrow though. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Hey David, thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Jim, nice thank you. you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Really appreciate it.